Hi guys, this is Andrew with headphones.com and today we're checking out the RAL requisite CA1A ribbon driver headphone. And yes, it's very expensive. Let's check it out. Now, just before diving in, I just wanna give a quick disclaimer. This headphone was sent to me by RAL to check out. Um, so big thanks to RAL for sending this in for review. But as usual, I've not been paid to say anything in particular about this headphone and all thoughts and opinions are my own. RAL requisite CA1A. CA is circumoral. Circumoral. <laughs> Circum something. <laughs> Alright, so as I mentioned, this is a ribbon driver headphone. Um, and that's actually super uncommon in headphones. So I'm just gonna take a moment to talk about what a ribbon driver is. I think the easiest way to explain this is that it is like a planar magnetic driver, but instead of having metal foil on plastic etched into a circuit, which is what you find in planars, with a ribbon, it's just a metal foil, and it also moves differently. A planar moves towards and away from its magnets, while a ribbon driver moves laterally to its magnets. Now, as it happens, this is not actually RAL's first ribbon driver headphone. That's sort of what they do. Um, but their first one, or at least the first one that I'm aware of, is this one here, which is the SR1A, or sometimes now known as the SR1B, that some of you may already know about. I just wanted to comment on one thing. If you haven't seen one of these before, it's worth demonstrating this. This is actually the ribbon driver, and, and in the SR1A they are replaceable, like this. Um, so that's pretty cool. But obviously it's quite striking to look at. It doesn't even look like a headphone. So, you know, the key difference between this one and the CA1A is that the CA1A is a circumoral headphone, which means it goes around the ear. And the CA1A is of course a much more traditional design than this cheese grater spaceship looking ear speaker thing with the SR1A. So now that you're an expert on what ribbon drivers are, let's get into the review of the CA1A. And as usual, we're gonna begin by talking about the build, design, and comfort. And with this one, it is definitely on the more esoteric looking side of things. It has this sort of made in a garage kind of vibe to it. The pads are literally just this foam material here. There's no covering on them or anything like that. And you can see with the rest of the build that refinement wasn't really a top priority on this one. However, with that said, the CA1A does feel super sturdy uh, in the hand, um, like extremely sturdy, especially this material here. And you know, just everything about it, like it feels like I could do whatever and it would be fine. I'm not worried about you know placing it on the desk or anything like that. I don't feel like this is one that I have to baby. Um, of course, be careful with your headphones. Be careful with your expensive things. But in any case, with this one, I get the sense that there were very deliberate design choices to focus uniquely on function and durability, and I appreciate that. For comfort, the fit uh, initially was a little bit odd. Um, so when I put it on, uh, it was almost as if like it didn't feel like the pads were quite touching in the back, but then um, I, I quickly got used to it and it is actually coupling, uh, which is kind of cool. And then of course, you know, the pads are a little bit on the you know rougher side of things. So that's interesting. And again, this is a lot more normal of a headphone than the madness that is this <laughs> ear speaker. <laughs> okay, so when I was wearing the SR1A, I had people uh, in my vicinity walk in and see me wearing it and they just couldn't, they just laughed uncontrollably at me. They couldn't stop laughing. And with this one, I, it doesn't elicit that reaction. So that's good, I guess. So the point being for comfort, it's actually not that hard to get used to. And for the rest of the sort of aesthetic and design aspects, the mechanical design and all that, I think this is a big improvement and it's much better than what you get on the SR1A. Now, before talking about the sound, I wanna mention that there's also this additional brick right here called the TI-1B. At least I think that's what it's called. I, the way that they do the lettering here, I, I assume that's TI, but um, yeah, you guys let me know what this is called. But it's a toroidal transformer ribbon headphone amplifier interface. What this does is it effectively allows me to connect the CA1A to all of the traditional source equipment that I have lying around here. And that's a big deal because in the past, you would have had to connect these with very specific dedicated source equipment that's only meant to power these headphones. Um, I think there's one from Shit Audio that they make specifically for the SR1A and then also their own amplifiers and sources. And with this interface device brick, uh, you can hook it up to literally anything that you want. Well, the the more normal headphone amplifiers, let's just say. So if you wanna run them from a hardcore, super well measuring solid state amplifier, you can do that. If you want to run them from a tube amp, you can do that. If you wanna run them from like this massively over-engineered hybrid monstrosity EF1000 thing over here, you can do that. And of course, audiophiles are all about doing exactly this kind of madness. So that's dope. <laughs> and if you're wondering which sources I ran it from for my testing and evaluation, the answer is all of them. I ran it off of all of them, all the sources. 
Okay, maybe not the iPhone dongle, but you get the idea. And just with that in mind, this does actually take uh, a decent amount of power to drive to sufficient volumes. And as an indication, while I didn't have to go to high gain on the Violetric HPA V550 over here, I did have to go past 12 o'clock. So let's now dive into the measurements and take a look at the frequency response measured on the Gross system right here. But as I'm showing you guys this, I also wanna mention that like I've heard a number of different prototypes of this headphone along the course of its development, uh, starting back in CanJam SoCal of 2021, so over a year ago. Those of us who heard that prototype all remarked how hot the treble was. Like it was definitely too much there, too zingy. Um, and if you were there and you heard this headphone, know that the end result here is not that. Um, it's very different from that, um, but it is still a little bit zingy. So we'll get into that. But the second time that I heard this, just as a comparison to that first initial listening session was at uh, Munich High End. The balance was a lot better. Like they had made significant improvements um, and they even told me that that you know, first prototype wasn't quite right. So uh, just keep in mind that if that's sort of what your impression was, if you were at that show and you heard it, um, know that the end result is different. Now, the reason that I'm mentioning this is that I get the feeling that a lot of the changes over time had to do with their pad development. And I'd actually like to see them go even further with this because I think that, that they can do more. I think that more can be done with this platform. Um, but with the CA1A, you do get two sets of pads. Uh, you get this one here, which is sealed all the way around. Um, and then you also get this pad right here, which has a gap at the top and the bottom. And it does change the sound signature uh, a little bit. And I found that the main differences between these two are actually in the bass. I ended up preferring this one that's on it right now, which is the sealed one that gives it a bit of a bass lift. But if you don't like bass, well, then they give you this other set right here and you can continue to lead a joyless existence. But as for the general tuning of this headphone, I'm going to describe it as neutral with a few quirks. And you can see the quirks on the graph. It basically trades upper mid range for lower treble. And to my ear, this causes it to lack a little bit of clarity or lose out a little bit of clarity there for certain types of tones like, you know, electric guitars don't have quite as much bite. Um, they're they're very, you know, chilled out there. Um, and then, you know, there's that sort of fatiguing quality there um, for cymbal hits or uh, vocals with sibilant tones due to the pronouncement in the lower treble. So that's kind of the effect that this has. I find personally like this particular region of the frequency response is quite fatiguing uh, just to the way that my ear works. And so that's why I, I like to kind of dial that down a bit and then boost the upper mids to kind of uh, even out that that presentation a little bit. And if you're looking for my EQ settings for this, I'll have left that uh, in the link in the description. So feel free to check that out. That's up in the headphone community forum there already. So that's how the CA1A looks on a graph. Let's just be clear. This is a more esoteric flavored kind of presentation. However, it's in the subjective aspects of sound, the technicalities, if you will, where the CA1A really shines. This is actually remarkable for these qualities. So let's get into that. So in my opinion, this headphone is a great example of what audiophiles commonly refer to as speed or the immediacy or attack. Uh, you know, there's an extra sense of tightness to the initial leading edge of tones. It's also very clear for trailing ends of tones to the point where, you know, after dialing it in with EQ, I found this to be competitive with some of the top dogs, some of the, you know, super high end headphones that are out there. So it's kind of remarkable at this quality. And if you ever wondered, if you ever asked yourself, like, what is that that audio files are talking about? If you get a chance to listen to this headphone, um, it, it is a good demonstration of that quality. So to simplify all of that, subjectively, it sounds very good. You know, soundstage is also excellent on this one. Uh, very spacious presentation overall. And I just wanted to comment on one thing here. And it's that the presentation here also is almost a little bit like tubey. It has that kind of euphony character that you sometimes get with tube amplifiers. This is almost more kind of like an involved presentation uh, for the images that are coming through. And yeah, these are just words that mean nothing. But if you've ever heard you know, certain headphones on tube amplifiers, you kind of know what I mean. Now, this is pure speculation on my part, but I imagine or I wonder if that quality that I'm hearing is due to the elevated third harmonic uh, distortion that this has, uh, which is actually very common to see in ribbon driver headphones in general. I'm sort of unsure if this is, you know, below the audible threshold there because it's not like it's super elevated. It's just that it is more elevated on this one than I think you typically find in, you know, many planars, for example. And it is also elevated over the second harmonic. So that's sort of what I'm wondering is if there's some of that kind of harmonic presence to it that, uh, that you get that makes it sort of tubey in a way. Now, compared to the SR1A right here, 
I find the CA-1A to be more my kind of thing, as not only does it not look like a spaceship, uh, it also has a more headphone-like presentation, and that's kind of what I'm into. That's why I'm into headphones and not speakers. I mean, the SR-1A does very unique things for the presentation, but overall, I think that the CA-1A is the one that I would choose between the two. The big thing is that the CA-1A actually does have the bass and the sub-bass filled in a little bit better, which is key in my opinion. And yes, I'm aware that the frequency response changes with certain synergies with output impedance and things like that for these because these are very unique. And I will do another video on that in the near future here uh, because these ones don't really have impedance. Although I shouldn't say that because with the with this brick, you, it does give you two impedances that you can choose from, which is kind of cool. But it is just worth noting that these do not behave like normal headphones when it comes to the relationship with source equipment. And just to talk a little bit more about that, when using the SR1A, for example, with the shit audio amplifier uh, and you toggle the baffle compensation mode, it boosts the bass up. And if you were to do the same thing with the CA-1A, it also boosts the bass up. So if you already own an SR-1A and you're you know, wondering, can you run the CA-1A off of your existing amplifier for the SR-1A? The answer is yes. Just make sure that you untoggle the baffle compensation. Otherwise it'll sound super muffly and dark and warm. And it's, it's really not that different, but it's a little bit different, <laughs> different enough to where it matters. Um, and uh, and I think it's worth keeping that in mind. I don't know, maybe you want that, but um, yeah, I found that I preferred it with the baffle compensation off this one, unsurprisingly, because this is a circumoral headphone, whereas this one is uh, not. So just put that over there. That's what you get for being not. <laughs> All right, so what do we think about the RAL CA1A? Well, for those who aren't in the EQ gang, I would caution you a little bit here, especially if you're sensitive to the lower treble. But even RAL themselves have acknowledged the importance of individual HRTF variation, head-related transfer functions that differ among people, and welcome personal adjustment with EQ, which is nice to see. And if I were to compare the CA1A here to the rest of the market, you know, the more normal headphones, um, you know, you can certainly find more neutral tuned headphones at much lower price points, but it's the intangible qualities with the CA1A that really make this a unique experience. And because of that, it's kind of difficult to make straightforward comparisons to other more normal headphones. This one fits a little bit more closely with other headphones that have unique or esoteric driver types, like the, the Head Audio headphone, for example. And it's closer to that kind of presentation than it is to something like a Sennheiser HD 800S or ZMF Tour, or, you know, even Planars. This is something that I think most folks probably aren't that used to in terms of the, the style of presentation that it has. Um, so it's worth keeping that in mind, but it's certainly competitive with other high performers for these subjective qualities, like the Head Audio headphone, uh, at this price point. And it does so in a particularly unique way, which is awesome, I think. Um, it's, it's something different, basically, is the way to put it. So in conclusion, do I recommend the RAL CA1A? I don't think this one is a straightforward blind buy, but if you're deep into the hobby already and you're looking for something different, with a super unique presentation, then I do think it's worth putting the CA1A on your radar. And just to give a bit of context, I've got the CA1A very high up on my personal ranking list for the things that I find to be compelling experiences. And while I think it's still worth approaching this with an appetite for more information, because it's hard to know what everybody is going to be, you know, uniquely focused on, you know, whether it's tonality, whether it's, you know, like a natural kind of timbre, or, you know, if you want tons of bass, it's hard to know that, you know, for everybody. But for what I personally index for, this does many of those things extremely well. And so that's why it's up there. It's one that I've been thoroughly enjoying. And as usual, check out all the other reviews up on headphones.com in the audio files section, uh, along with our Discord, all linked in the description, all that good stuff. So uh, that is it for me in this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.